So now let's go through an example where we look at calling just a simple hello world function um, from an interpreter, from a script, and from something called a Jupyter notebook, which we'll use extensively when we're using Python. Okay, so let's go ahead and start here. The first thing that we'll do um, is let's go over here and I'm going to open a terminal. And the way that I'm going to do this is you can open a terminal anywhere. I'm going to open it specifically here um, because there is a specific terminal that I want to open eventually, a specific file in that folder. So I'll open a terminal with this folder. And the first thing that I can do here um, is uh, if I'm going to type Python, it's going to launch the Python application. So I want to see which one it's actually calling. So uh, I can actually call which Python. And it tells me, oh, it's going to be calling the version of Python that's installed in Anaconda bin Python. Um, so if I actually just launch Python like this, it will actually launch the interpreter. I'm running Python 3.5.2. In this example, you should have this or newer. And if I want to call hello world, it's as simple as saying print, open parentheses. I'll create a string, hello world from interpreter. And like that, it just spits it out to the console, right? Now, if I want to exit this version of Python, in my version, I'm going to hit Control D. And that exits me, and I'm back to the terminal. Now, another thing that I can do here is I can actually create a file and run that file as long as it has the extension .py at the end. So there's many ways of running Python. Um, so in that interpreted language that I just showed before, you know, we can run any type of Python that we want here. I could set variables. Um, so let's say I wanted var1 to equal 32. It is. Now if I print var1 like this, I can see that it has a value of 32. So I can actually use this uh, directly from the console. Just call Python, see what the output is. And it's a really nice debugging, or if you want to find out what a specific line of code does, um, you can actually use um, the, the terminal to, to do a lot of that code, but I'll show you a better way here in just a moment. So one of the other things that we could do is let's actually create, I'm going to open up a text editor. You can open up any text editor you want, but in this one, I'm just going to say print, and I'll say hello world from file right here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this inside of a directory right here where let's save it inside of where I've actually I've opened up the terminal in here and I'm going to call this um, hello underscore world dot pi right here and I'll save it right so now um, since I'm using sublime text it automatically since it's got a dot py ending well it knows one of the syntaxes for Python and so it does some highlighting for me so I can see that the string variable that I have right here hello world from file and the print function um, are given specific colors it's a nice IntelliSense so now if I were to um, actually do a um, ls on everything that has a dot py extension I can see I have two functions in here one of them is hello world.py. So to call that function, I just have to say Python and then I'll say hello world.py. When I do that, it prints hello world from file. So anything that I had written in Python inside of that um, file would actually be um, at that time compiled into bytecode and then run, right? And then now when I run it again, it'll just use the bytecode file that's been created. Very easy to do. Now the last thing that I want to show you is something called a Jupyter notebook. Now, this is another way of calling Python, and it's something we'll use extensively, especially as data scientists. But essentially what it does is it opens up a local hosted web server such that now when I go in and I look at the, um, the interpreted notebook that I have, I'm going to be able to run Python from my web browser. All that it's doing is it's using my web browser as a development environment. Right? And so Jupyter Notebooks are essentially one type of development environment that you can use. So let's start and see what they look like. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to type Jupyter Notebook. And if you installed the Anaconda version of Python, Jupyter Notebook is already installed on your system. If I run it from this directory, any Jupyter Notebook inside of that directory I can open up and run. And there are lines of specific code that I can use to run it. 
If you're familiar with R, or if you're familiar with using MATLAB, this is going to be a very, very similar interface, a very similar development environment that we want to use. So I have a number of different Python introduction notebooks. What we'll do is we'll just create our own. I'm just going to create a new um, Python 3, um, and there's a lot of different environments that I'll talk about later, but essentially I'm going to open up one of these. If you haven't installed environments, you'll just see like a Python 3 right here. So I'll create a new Jupyter Notebook right here, and you'll see some interface things right here. One thing to, to really notice is we can type code into this box and see what the output looks like. So if I were to say print right here, and I were to say hello world, like this, and we'll say from notebook. All that I'm really doing is I am uh, telling Python in very much the same way from an interpreter in the terminal that I want to run that line of code. It'll run that line of code, right? So I can actually hit the, um, the play button, run this cell, right? So if I click run cell, I can see, oh, I've just run this cell. And I can print hello world from notebook right here. Um, and this is a very interesting thing because any variables that I create are going to be stored kind of globally um, inside of this session of Python that I have right here. And so I can run new lines of code right here. I can perform visualizations. I can do lots of things that are going to be interesting from a data science standpoint and from just a numerical programming standpoint and use them inside of a Jupyter Notebook. I can also give this thing a name right here. So we'll just call this Hello World. Okay, and now um, I'll go ahead and I can close this hello world version right here. Stay on the page. Let me save it first. Right. File, save. And now I can close it. And you can see that it's still running in the background, right? But I could be running all sorts of these other um, notebook files. So the one that we just created is called hello world.ipynb, ipython notebook is what originally they used to be called. Jupyter saves all of these notebooks into hello world.ipymb. So whatever it is, .ipymb. As long as you open up a terminal where a notebook is installed and launch Jupyter Notebook, you'll get access to any of the Jupyter Notebooks that are in there. Right? And so we'll use these extensively in the class, especially for doing some of the examples, because they're really, really nice um, to be able to look at some, some blocks of code and be able to look at the output. What does that code look like? Rather than trying to run them straight from the terminal or from a file. These are just going to be rapidly being able to use a lot of the examples that we have out of the box. Now, what I would like you to do is actually Install Python 3 on your machine. Try using the Anaconda distribution of it if you don't already have it installed. And then run some of these Hello World examples. Try to open up and create a Jupyter Notebook and run Hello World. Make sure that you can do that, and then we'll continue on. We'll talk about some of the basic Python syntax and go through an extended example.